Did you know that in Christ you have an indestructible life? That's fantastic news all the time, but it's especially encouraging when life gets hard or feels uncertain. Don't give up. Satan can't have you, the world can't overcome you, and the challenges you face can't stop you. In Christ, you're indestructible. Welcome to Indestructible Life, a podcast where women discover the life Jesus is and treasure the life God's Word gives. I'm Emily Wickham, a wife and mom, plus an author and speaker, but most importantly, I'm a woman loved by God, just like you. I want to welcome you today to season four. This is episode one. We are beginning a series called The Traits of a Godly Woman. And so we're going to take some time looking at different women in the Bible and learning from their examples. Uh, We're going to see different character traits that are present in their lives. And these are godly traits and they are something we can aspire to. So I was encouraged just in my preparation of this lesson. It's kind of interesting to me because we're actually going to talk about Ruth today. We're going to look specifically at working with excellence. And like I said, it's interesting to me because I am surprised really that the Holy Spirit would direct me to start with a topic about working (laughs) because I love to think about God's grace and resting in Him. But when we think about work, it is in the mindset of coming to God as a Christian woman. And so, yes, of course, we cannot work for our salvation, but once we are saved, we have a lot of work to do as Christian women. We have a lot to serve the Lord with. And so that's our focus today, working with excellence. And to get us started, of course, I want to begin with prayer. So please pray with me. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word and for this topic before us, working with excellence. I pray you would speak to us and teach us through your word and through this lesson from the book of Ruth. God, we commit this time to you for your honor and glory. And I pray that you would give me every word I speak in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, as I mentioned in my prayer, we are going to look at the story of Ruth. There's so much in this tiny little book of the Bible. We can learn from Ruth's example about work specifically. And let me just preface this lesson with God's word in Colossians. Uh, Chapter 3, verses 23 through 24 read, Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord, rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. I love that because it's such a great reminder as we go through life and we work hard. First and foremost, it is the Lord Christ we serve. And as you know, life involves an incredible amount of work. But God is so marvelous in the fact that he never asks us to do something he is not willing to do. And he is our primary example of working with excellence. And in the first couple chapters of Genesis, uh, we are told about God's work creating the world and everything in the world. And at the end of each day, God saw all he had made, and he would say it was good. You know, God does not do things halfway. He always does his best. And as Christians, we should do the same. 
So today, as I said, we're going to study what it means to work with excellence. And so I invite you, if you have your Bible with you, please open to Ruth chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 2 through 19. And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after one in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. So she departed and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, May the Lord be with you. And they said to him, May the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? And the servant in charge of the reapers answered and said, She is the young Moabite woman who returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Thus she came and has remained from the morning until now. She has been sitting in the house for a little while. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Listen carefully, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field. Furthermore, do not go on from this one, but stay here with my maids. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Indeed, I have commanded the servants not to touch you. When you are thirsty, go to the water jars and drink from what the servants draw. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? And Boaz answered and said to her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me, and how you left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and came to a people that you did not previously know. May the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and indeed have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. And at mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here, that you may eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers, and he served her roasted grain, and she ate and was satisfied and had some left. When she rose to glean, Boaz commanded his servants, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not insult her. And also, you shall purposely pull out for her some grain from the bundles and leave it that she may glean, and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She also took it out and gave Naomi what she had left after she was satisfied. Her mother-in-law then said to her, Where did you glean today, and where did you work? May he who took notice of you be blessed. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked, and said, The name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. I love how Ruth said, please let me go. And, you know, if I had to go outside in hot and buggy fields to bend down all day and pick up leftover crops, I don't think I really would be thrilled. I'm not a gardener. I don't do the humid, the hot, the bugs. (laughs) But I suppose if that was the only way God provided for me to care for myself and for my aging mother-in-law, I would be grateful. And, you know, Ruth was very grateful. She was not holed up in Naomi's home, feeling sorry for herself and dwelling on her losses. Her husband had died and left her a widow, and she didn't have any children. 
She had left her parents and her family and all she knew. She was in a foreign country with her mother-in-law and she was eager to work. I think that's remarkable. I think it's very commendable. It's noteworthy. It's something you and I can learn so much from. Her attitude is truly an example to all of us. And we see in verses three through seven that not only was Ruth willing to work, she was also very humble and polite. Look again at verse seven. She asked the servant in charge, please let me glean and gather after the reapers. She didn't approach this person with an entitled attitude. She was humble and she spoke politely. You know, sometimes we can allow stress to just frazzle us to no end and we can get snippy or we can get snippy with family members. And part of being an excellent worker is to be polite. And we see this in Ruth. She demonstrated this politeness so well and she practiced this humility and courtesy. They are important components of working with excellence. Let's move on to verses eight through 10. And what we see here is every job includes a boss. And in Ruth's case, Boaz owned the field and he held ultimate authority over every worker. And when Ruth entered his field, She placed herself under his authority. Thankfully, Boaz cared about Ruth's well-being. He instructed her to stay with his maids, and he commanded his servants not to touch her. Ruth listened to Boaz's guidance, and she treated him respectfully. She appreciated his kindness, and she bowed to the ground. Ruth's gratitude and respect give us two more qualities to aim for when we work. So whether we stay at home full time or we work outside the home, the Lord is our ultimate boss. And knowing this gives us all the more reason to work with excellence. In verses 11 through 13, Ruth's reputation preceded her. Boaz had heard how Ruth cared for Naomi and her courage in a foreign land impressed him. He also expressed blessing on her, noting her reliance on God. Just like Boaz learned about Ruth, others learn about us through our behavior and through our actions, through our work ethic and our faith in God. People pay attention. They watch and they compare our actions with our words to see if we are a hypocrite or not, to see and determine whether we have integrity. I like the way my husband often defines integrity and It's being the same person, no matter who we're with, wherever we are. And so Ruth was a woman of integrity and it showed in her work. In verses 14 through 16, Boaz had compassion on Ruth and he served her during the mealtime. He permitted her to eat all she wanted. But it's interesting because when it came to working in the field, Boaz did not give her crops for free. Instead, he told the workers to make allowances for Ruth. He instructed them to let her glean in the sheaves, which was where the reapers gleaned. And according to Peter Pett at studylight.org, and I quote, Boaz commanded his young men to allow her to glean even in the very place where they were reaping without reproaching her. She would thus be able to pick up the best of the gleanings with the other gleaners being unable to prevent it. 
for they did not dare to glean among the reapers. They knew that they would be sharply rebuked for it and even manhandled." End quote. Boaz also directed the reapers to pull out some of what they gleaned and drop it on the ground for Ruth. I'm so touched by this man's compassion. He really had a tender heart toward Ruth. And like I said, he did not give her these crops for free. She still had to work, but he was kind of behind the scenes, commanding his workers to show mercy and to just have a gentleness toward her. Boaz went above and beyond to provide for Ruth without infringing on her dignity. Work is hard, but work is honorable. So Ruth did the work and God blessed her by giving her a kind and generous field owner like Boaz. And I think in the same way, God blesses us when we work with excellence. You and I are engaged in different types of work, but God sees it all and he's with each and every one of us. That in itself is a great comfort. But I just want to remind you today, God sees you specifically in what you're doing for him. And when your heart is right before the Lord, he blesses that, my friend. It's important to him. So keep up the excellent work. Okay, let's move on to verses 17 through 28. Ruth committed to working all day. And we can only imagine how hot and sweaty and tired this woman of God was. But she kept at it. She did not give up. She persisted until evening. And I'd like to share what John Gill, a commentator, referred to Ruth as. He said she was constant and diligent. I think this is such an accurate description of Ruth. On top of working hard all day, Ruth shared her leftover food with Naomi after she got home. So even though she engaged in this physical labor all day, she still thought about Naomi's needs when she returned home. So Ruth was not only hardworking, she was thoughtful. And these are two more aspects of working with excellence. And then in verse 19, we see that Ruth also gave credit where credit was due. Naomi asked, who she worked with, and Ruth replied that she worked with Boaz. You know, she did not pretend all of her success came by her own doing. She recognized Boaz's part, and as a result, Naomi requested God's blessing on Boaz. You know, it can be tempting to take all the credit for a job well done, but like Ruth, let's remember the people who help us along the way. God sees what we're doing and other people see what we're doing. And may we do our work with excellence for God's glory and for other people's benefit. I wanna apply what we've seen here in scripture even further. I want us to review Ruth's attitude when it came to work. First of all, number one, she had a willingness to work. And, and truthfully speaking, that is not always the case with all people, unfortunately. So it is a characteristic that really can stand out and make a difference. You know, let's ask ourselves, are we willing to work when it's required of us? Or do we try to do the least amount of work as possible? I hope not. I know we get tired, I know we get weary, but let's ask God to really instill within us this willingness to work. Number two, we see humility and courtesy in Ruth. Can this be said of us in our working environments? Or do we act like we're better than others? Are we grumpy 
and rude. Maybe we don't like our job. Perhaps we think it's below our abilities, or maybe it truly is below our abilities. Maybe we don't like the people that our job causes us to be around. Whatever the case, let's strive to be humble and courteous by the power of the Holy Spirit. Number three, we see gratitude and respect. Ruth did not take her job for granted and she honored her employer. And I have found gratitude makes an incredible difference in the way we approach work. It improves the entire experience. And respect is something we see less and less in today's world. So let's be certain we show respect to our earthly boss if we have one. And of course, let's show respect to the Lord always. Let's not be casual in our interactions with the Lord because he is holy, holy, holy. Number four, we see integrity in Ruth. She was the same person everywhere she went. So let's ask ourselves, are we or do we look a lot different in the way we behave at home versus the way we behave in public? And then number five, Ruth was blessed. God blessed her for her excellent care of Naomi and her willingness to start over in a new land. How has God blessed you for the work you've done for him? He always does, my friend. I hope that encourages you today. Number six, Ruth was hardworking and thoughtful. She stayed committed to the task as long as necessary. Plus, she provided nourishment for Naomi when she could have expected Naomi to serve her after a long day of work in a hot and buggy field. So how about us? Do we follow through on the work God gives us? That is so important. And in addition, do we think of others before ourselves? Number seven, do we have a willingness to give credit to the people where credit is due? Ruth did not claim all of the glory for her labors. She credited Boaz for his part. Do we recognize the people in our lives who come alongside us? I want to condense everything we've talked about so far into truth number one. A woman who works with excellence possesses a proper view of God, of others, and of herself. All right, now I'm going to move us into Proverbs 31. And I'm just going to read a selected portion of this chapter. But there is so much of value we can learn. This lady in Proverbs 31 looks for work and she gladly uses her hands to work. Let me read verses 17 through 19. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands grasp the spindle. So this woman has a body that grows strong because she puts it to good use working. She works long hours with her hands. Okay, then in verse 22, we read, She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. And I just want to interject here that not everyone is a seamstress. I know I am certainly not a seamstress, so I don't want to leave you with the impression that you have to make your own clothing. (laughs) But I think the point here is that This woman sews her own clothes with fine material. She uses the talents she has and puts them to good use. So you and I might not be seamstresses, but there are other things we can do with our hands. I can cook good meals for my family. I know I have a sister who is an excellent gardener and she can use this talent to work hard and and be a blessing to others in, in this way. You know, maybe 
you are really good at cleaning <laughs> and you can use this talent to bless your family and you can use this talent even to bring an in income for your family. So think about the ways you can use your hands like this Proverbs 31 woman. Let me read verses uh, 24 and 25. It says, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies belts to the tradesmen. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she smiles at the future. So again, this woman is using her skill with her hands. In her case, it is sewing clothes. She not only makes these clothes for herself, but she makes them and sells them for an income. And she makes belts. This woman is strong and dignified and confident about the future because she's prepared. And these days, there's a lot to be said about being prepared. Verses 27 through 29, she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and bless her, her husband also, and he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. This woman stays busy caring for her family. They acknowledge and appreciate her industrious ways. Ladies, there is a lot to be said for taking care of our families. I don't think this is a quality truly appreciated in the world, but I want to just encourage you in this area. It is of great value to care for our husband and our families. And that can look different for us. Uh, you know, many of you have jobs outside the home. And I did that for a while. I have tremendous respect for you. It takes a lot of strength to work outside the home and also take care of things in the home. So wherever you are in life, whether you are working outside the home or full-time in the home, be encouraged because God values what you're doing. It is of great worth. All right, I want to read verse 31. God's word says, Give her the product of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. So all the good this woman does results in blessing and honor for her. So let me just recap. The Proverbs 31 woman used her hands to work with excellence. And as I mentioned, that gives us reason to think about the ways we use our hands throughout the day. Are our hands busy, loving, serving, and caring others. That should be our goal, even though times have changed a lot since Old Testament days. Truth number two, working with excellence starts in our hearts and flows out through our hands. All right, I'm going to conclude our lesson today with this thought. Sometimes we only think of work as labor we receive payment for, like a job in the quote unquote real world. The Bible, however, teaches differently. Whether we spend our days at home or in the office or elsewhere, we should do our best at every task that God puts in front of us. Because as Colossians 3.24 tells us, it is the Lord Christ whom you serve. I want to thank you for joining me for this lesson today. And if you are planning to work through these lessons with friends, I have prepared some discussion questions you can use when you get together. So please go to my website, proclaiminghimtowomen.com, and you can go to my page that is titled Free Resources and download the page there titled Discussion Questions on a Woman Who Works with Excellence. 
I hope these questions are a blessing to you. I hope this message has been a blessing to you. And I just thank you for spending this time with me. Let me close us in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for your eternal word. Thank you for what we learn from Ruth and the Proverbs 31 woman about working with excellence. Please grow us in our work as far as our attitude and in the quality of what we do. Let us honor and glorify you, God. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for Indestructible Life. If this podcast blesses you, please be sure to share it with your friends. And remember, God loves you. In Christ, you're indestructible.